guys, and welcome back to the Hot Seat. I'm your host, Priscilla Moy, and I hope you enjoyed that little talk and recurring interview with Paul Gunn, or not not Paul Gunn. It's always a joy to have him in the studio. We're going to meet his other half, the one snickering behind the camera because she's just that <laughs> amazing, and she just loves us and everything we talk about. But she, her energy is amazing. I can't wait to have her here. Um, everyone, please welcome Joanna Heckman, the one and only. Here she comes in style. <laughs> Her legendary. No, but yeah. look at you. You're the legend. Oh, look girl. at this. Oh my god. No, it's like. Stop. Stop. Oh my god. It's on fire, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, honey. It's so good to see you. Oh my god. It's so good to Please see you. Please be careful. Sitting <laughs> down. Oh my god, you have your legendary iconic leopard hat on. This is like. Yeah, this is this is my thing. This is your staple. Um, yeah. Hey, you this is really, about, yeah. really a uh, a weapon. I, oh, I should. Yeah. It's a workout too. You can like. You know, <laughs> but I hear you wear this a lot for auditions too. Like this is kind of your staple hat, your staple look. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When when I used to audition, um, mm -hmm. it, it, it's been great. I haven't had an audition for quite a while. <laughs> um, yeah, the, okay. I'll tell you the story. Michael Kane, Michael Kane. You know, he really has influenced me so much. He went on like three hundred auditions before he ever got anything. Yeah, and he said, you know, the secret is. It, there's no shot. It, you just don't quit. You just keep going. And that's the secret. And the other thing, he had this really like 30 foot long scarf. So ha at his auditions, he would like wrap it around and around and around because he said, you know, how are you going to stand out? What, what's, right. you know, I, now I call it the fava bean moment, you know, like. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a, you know, I tell Paul too, like, uh, find your fava bean moment in whatever it is. Make, make, you know, do something that stands out or that people will remember, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, I started wearing just leopard hat, like just yeah. auditions and stuff. And uh, yeah. yeah, so it's something that uh, like, like this, this people, this is a fava bee moment right here. <laughs> I feel like Priscilla is her own. It depends on the day. Ah! I have matched it towards who was coming today. You know, ah! The night before, he, he interviews drag queens. He's, entertaining. he's an MC. He does the nightclub light, but he's also hospitality manager all that stuff so i'm just like oh and then there's you right <laughs> you i have no the energy are you saying i'm a drag queen you know because mm -hmm. well, i have been one i'm about to say i know? have been one there's no problem with it they're fabulous uh, <laughs> listen <laughs> it, it is i i wish i could you know but no but the energy i feel like you're very oh, I, I, you're I, rocker I, we could totally be drag queens together if you want i'm just saying you know <laughs> and, you, and you need a name you know you got gun you got ziggy and i need to be you need to make up a name <laughs> yeah um but the starting from the beginning so you have a huge resume right like i look you up and what's interesting with news to me is that this is your stage name right a gene heathen is my yeah. stage name yeah Ooh, there's a story behind that too. <laughs> Are you willing to talk about it or is it too sensitive a topic? Mm, I don't know. We can talk about it. Oh, let's talk about it. <laughs> you have so many different identities. When I type in your name, how, how I know you guys, right? <laughs> All this stuff comes up. I'm like, is this her? I was like, it's got to be. So I put in Joanna Heckman, actor. I was like, okay, it's still coming up. I was like, all right, this is new, <laughs> right? And then Joanna Heckman, Ziggy. And then it's just coming up multiple different things. <laughs> you know, Gene Heaven and all that stuff. So what's what's the story? Oh my God. Um, you know, lovely. Um, well, actually, I need to finish my drag queen story first. <laughs> okay, okay, go ahead. I'm going to see. <laughs> it was funny. Uh, so, Ron and Jimmy, Jimmy Starr and Ron Russell, yeah, yeah, had yeah. interviewed Paul and I. And they're like, so many of our, our female friends look like drag queens. <laughs> they're like, a lot of them do. <laughs> and the, they look at me and, the, and they go, well, we never. You look at you and say, oh, you know, you're a drag queen. I go, oh, but I can. <laughs> and I have. Yeah. Um, being in the uh, ballroom dance business for yeah. years, uh, I, I was a pretty fierce competitor, so my nickname was Vicious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> However, I never walked on anyone's toes. You know, I have my principles and always kind to people. I never threw them under the bus, but that's just the way, you, should, you know, a human being should be, right? Professional too. Yeah. So when you're at end space, yeah. And uh, it's so weird when you come across in this business, these, these deep, people think they have to be these divas or whatever. And the real people that I worked with, like in Casino, where I got my side card years ago with Robert De Niro. Mm. Oh my God. 
he's amazing. Mm-hmm. He's very private and quiet. And I really relate to him because I'm, I'm like very shy by nature mm-hmm. and um, kind, of, kind of a recluse. Yeah. <laughs> so I was always kind of a lone wolf. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, people don't need to be these pretend devious no. divas and shit. Anyway. I mean, if you're, that's your role, but uh, not right. It's, like, it's fun to play, it. but right. but uh, God, treat people. That's what I'm saying. Well, yeah. right, and that's what we're talking about with, with Paul. Is just you. It's it doesn't have to be all that. It's work at the end of the day. And I think you like as much as Paul. Like he's from theater. You also have been in theater and been in dance, especially. Yeah, and yeah. You do modern. You tap. And you're doing all this extensive work. You know the work that goes behind all of it. So when you finally perform and you're in professional settings, you don't mess that up, right? <laughs> right. So right. I feel like no matter how you portray yourself, that you're this actor and whatever and you walk around. Sometimes I don't know about you, but. I try to not want to talk about the fact that I do A, B, C, D, F, G, because then people put you in that pool mm-hmm. where you say, well, I'm an actor. Right? And then they're all sudden like, oh, here we go, right? And you're just like, I'd rather just right now, I'm not, you know? Yeah, totally. So that, that same philosophy in the dance business, mm-hmm. a lot of my dance partners were, were gay, fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> so one looked really like Jodie Foster. Okay. When he got dragged up, he, he looked like a six foot right. five Jodie Foster. <laughs> OMG. So he did, did this uh, international drag show, and me and this other girl, Elaine, were yeah. his backup dancers. So so we you know jacked up our hair, we're on heels. So I, I was about maybe 6'1 with that. And um, people really thought I was a drag queen, and I let them think that. <laughs> <laughs> you probably had so much fun with it, too. You're like, OK, let's ride this out. Let's see. I'm like, I'm a girl, damn it! What do you, what do you mean? <laughs> I'm a princess, goddammit, I'm a princess. <laughs> anyway. That, that's fun, though. Yeah, yeah. It, it was it was really, really fun. So, you know, characters, that kind of thing, are really fun to play. And, um, yeah, you, you just got to have fun with it. And, and, above all, don't take yourself too seriously. People that buy into their own hype become douches, man. <laughs> Yeah, right? Yeah, for, yeah. I'm sure you've come across some of them. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't be laughing like this, but it's just coming out. <laughs> Let's all just take a moment. <laughs> uh, we, we all we all, know, we all know at least one person. It's two, three, four, or, oh, or ten. Or, or at least we all have one in common right now. <laughs> I think what's funny is that Vegas, and I'm not talking about it, it's just interesting and fun to me when I'm like, oh my, oh my god, you know, you know, OMG, it's not just me, OMG, but, you know. Right. So. Yeah, it's, it's so weird. <laughs> I've never seen her break character, I'm a great producer. Maria's behind here crying this entire well, time. Well, I have, have that ability to make people break. Yeah, so all you have to do is myself. Me, you know. Remember that one time? <laughs> but yeah. <clears throat> but I mean, that's why you you come you come here, you work, and then you, you leave. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> so sometimes people think that <clears throat> they, they don't have to have any training whatsoever. <laughs> is it the city or is it just... <laughs> oh, I did it just... Oh my God, post-edit. Some people think... That, um, <clears throat> I'm crying. Do you need to buy, buy talent? Or, <laughs> can you? Can you? No. I was recently told that my degree was just a piece of paper that I hide behind. Wow. Wow. It's a degree. If you guys want to see it? She has a degree. Face. Excuse me. This is what a degree deserves. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's just a piece of paper that's not needed in this industry. <laughs> and this is by, said by someone who doesn't have a degree that's trying to be in this industry and there's reason. And you know what that is all about is their own insecurity. I, I studied right, psychology right. Uh, on my yeah. own because it's um, fascinating. And, so and fascinating. really acting is yeah, the is. study it of is. human nature. It, it is. is psychology. Yeah. So it's really fun when <laughs> people do certain things or actions and... and Psycho- the psychology of it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's um, Humans are way more complex. Douches. Douche. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. I think it's, 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 just, it's like, don't be a douche, people. Just it's hard, be though, nice. They don't think people that. Well. It's self-awareness. Maybe that's the problem. Oh, self-awareness. Yeah. Maybe that is. I Maybe they need a mirror to go. I don't know. I think, I'll tell you what I think. <laughs> and you can save you because you've worked in Vegas. Um, I think it's very easy in certain areas in the United States or certain areas of the world where they make it very accessible. I think, you know, coming, if you've trained and worked your entire life in order to experience different levels and different places and how it really is, you appreciate the craft of it and how hard it is to obtain a single job versus coming to a place where you can say, hey, how did you get on that? And the next day, you're now calling yourself an actor and now you're working with people and you all think that, oh, <laughs> we're the same. And so with Hollywood 2.0, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like I haven't had many people and I, this is so unhinged. I've never had such an unhinged. Oh my God, we're going to, I'm going to get tired. Well, this is the hot seat, dog. I know, is it? But not for me. I'm not trying to get fired. <laughs> or for me, I might lose everything here. <gasps> Are you kidding me? But no, Are you kidding no. me, dog? Who, who's going to fire us? Who's better than us here? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I blame Paul. He said he was not on my my list today, so he's made me so unhinged, and now I'm just just go, bro. Just go. Hey, unhinged is unhinged. awesome. Are you kidding me? No, unhinged it's is the it's real, real. The real I will gym. say, <laughs> I will say though, the whole motto I think, and I think you guys are the same, but is maintaining realness where it's the most fake. Because yeah. it's not what it is. How these people are portraying, it's not. No, it's not at all. And, and yeah. acting, I mean, it, being with Paul is so awesome. And Chris, mm -hmm. <laughs> and our friend Jack, Jack Thaler, kudos to you, baby. <laughs> it's like your kids again. And you're playing, right? Because acting, okay, when you're a kid, you're free, right? You, you, you laugh at stuff, you make funny faces and people laugh. You don't care what other people think. And then as you grow older, you're taught, oh, don't do that, don't do that. You can't show emotion, don't do that. Oh, you should not do that or act that way. And acting, you need to strip all that away. And such a wonderful coach I had years ago, Carl Buto, bless you, done, a Siciliano, and, and he was tough and I loved it. And, oh my God. He's, he's like, just strip all that stuff away that you were taught not to do and go back to being a kid again and be free. You know, just don't care what other people think. And, and when you truly get to that point, when you really don't care what other people think, then you're free. Mm -hmm. and, and it's the most wonderful feeling because then you can make silly faces, be different characters. And, and I love playing monsters, right? A lot of people are like, oh, don't cover my face. I'm like, ugly me up, baby. <laughs> right, right, right. right. right? Uh, and I love creating monsters, yeah. too. So that's the true freedom. Yeah. It's like you're a kid again, and you're running around playing, and oh, my God, it's so awesome. So is that what drives you to become a professional actor? So you went from dance, you know, you modeled, and you did some acting, you mean theater and dance, that's still acting, you're still character when you're performing mm -hmm. as a dancer. Um, how did that transition go on you doing this full time? And then you did costume, you know, you did a lot of backstage stuff, professionally, award-winning mm -hmm. costume designer. Oh, thank you. <laughs> also, you know, now as you're an actor and you're actively working as an actor on these sets alongside crew, where's the motivation coming forward for that? Oh, I, I just, that what really sparks my brain and my body is when people, you know, they'll, they'll give me an idea and, and Paul does that a lot too. Um, and Jack and Chris and, and our friends like Brad. And um, I just want to create until I pass on to the next dimension mm -hmm. and then continue to create. It, it, the fun about films is you can create something out of nothing. Mm -hmm. it, it's just your brain, right? It, you think of an idea or whatever. And all of a sudden you uh, write it down and you get the crew and you film it. And it's so exciting to create something original. And, and that's the trick because it's like, okay, how do you come up with something that's never been done before? Right. Yeah. And that's the excitement for me. Yeah. Whether it's um, like a song, 
I compose or, you know, an idea for a film. It, it's, oh my God, just creating something out of nothing. Yeah. And I think, because oh, I've never had someone talk about wardrobe or costume oh. design. Maybe like some fashion designers and stuff like that, but with film, TV, even theater, you have to have that tell the story as well. Right? Yes. So oh what, my God, girl. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. What is um, your point of view on what you love about it and how do you approach that every gig you get? Because it's not just film. You know, like I should say you could play, right? So what, how do you approach that? Okay. Yeah. Wardrobe, the amazing thing ever since, uh, oh my God, I, I'll get the stories upon stories, but wardrobe, it gives the feel and the look of the film. So whenever I approach it, I, I talk to the director, we have many meetings and okay, how, how do you want this to look? How do you want this to feel? And wardrobe is so important for that. Mm -hmm. And so many times oh my God, people just take it for granted. They, oh, you know, we want you to do wardrobe for free for, for the love of the project or whatever. I'm like, first of all, tell me what the project is. Right. <laughs> how can I love it? And, um, it, oh my God, it, it's so um, undervalued, I think. Yeah, and where are you getting all these pieces from? Like, yeah, you know, yes. It out of your own closet. Oh my God. You know? uh, some Crazy. of them, yes. Yeah. Um, my mother, well, God bless my mother. She's, I love you. <laughs> mm -hmm. She taught me to sew my first stitch when I was three years old. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I remember it was a pink kangaroo with yellow thread onto this quilt piece that she still mm -hmm. has. <laughs> And I thank her so much for that because it's come in handy. You know, I, I was making ballroom gowns and Latin yeah. gowns for students and myself. And, and then in film and dance and, and theater, it is the most valuable thing I think that you know, she's ever taught me, that any, anyone's ever yeah. taught me. By eight years old, I designed this bikini swimsuit. It, it was really cool. It was red, white, and blue and like a tube top. And I put like corset stitching here, okay. the boy shorts before they were a, uh -huh. a thing, right? Yeah. And I had corset on the sides. Yeah, the lace up and that, yeah. So I made it worth the pool that day. And yeah, so ever since then, I, I just been creating things that I liked and yeah. that I grew up with and um, unique things. Yeah. So, so I approached films the same way. Um, I want, I want it to, well, I, I always say, I want it to be so unique that people will want to cosplay this. Yeah. Okay. Oh, absolutely. So, so bring out the character, uh, in Space Wars, Quest for the Deep Star, mm -hmm. with, um, Garo, Seijin, and it's a wonderful family. <laughs> this is one of your recent films, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, he was so amazing. He, he really treated people well. And we had multiple meetings you know, for, for costumes and I, I was sketching things just by hand because I just feel it's more hands-on and he wanted the feel of some of these, oh, like 70s, 80s, uh, like, like Star Wars, Star Trek, all the things we grew up mm -hmm. with, you know, yeah. and it was really interesting, the evolution of that. He said, okay, I want it to look like this and then I kind of uh, add my own spin on it and, and Oh my God, God bless him for uh, him and Mike Conway and, and Deborah Richards. Oh my God, these directors I worked with that gave me freedom Yeah. It, it, to just kind of go for it. Yeah, they trusted you. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. Oh my yeah. God. Because when somebody says, uh, no, 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 which is, you know, certain words are not in, in my vocabulary, like no or can't or won't, yeah. <laughs> they give you freedom and it's amazing so you know kept sketching different ideas and and some some of the things that i had already already created in my um you know wardrobe over the years other things i oh my god go to like savers thrift shops or whatever mm -hmm. and i would alter them right. and you know, morph them into something cool yeah. like the space barbarian <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> that was cycle, fun you know <laughs> i'm cycling basically yeah 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 so it's a combination of, um, and even things on Amazon, and it's just a combination of um, many things of bidding on eBay, mm -hmm. like Duel, that, that um, I made a, a samurai outfit for Paul. 
and um, he did such an amazing job with that. Every, everyone did an amazing job in Jewel. But the process, so, so wardrobe, months before project, hopefully, <laughs> sometimes they're like a week, like, we need this in a week. I'm like, oh my God, yeah. <laughs> you're killing me. All right, all right. When you have the time to bid on stuff on eBay or whatever, or create something from scratch, then, it, you know, th that's the mm, uniqueness of it. it yeah. It's something that you have never seen before. Yeah. It's challenging. Yeah. It's, you know, when I went to get my BFA, like I had to be in wardrobe crew and take those classes and oh, spend time, good. like I, put an hour that's to why. <laughs> and then learn how to sew. Like there's more behind just someone, you know, dressing someone, right? As you make it by hand, there's multiple people, there's stitching, there's fittings. And sometimes it just does not oh. work right or you thought that they were this way and doesn't sit right doesn't lay right the fabrics like, right so the appreciation i think that wardrobe um does not have in accordance to it's so common people be like oh yeah here makeup make me look pretty or make me like prosthetics but they don't really pay attention to how much that without what they're wearing this doesn't make sense the lines that they're saying is yeah sense. the location That's... you look you know what i mean the clo clothes well then again i, I you know i me. But so I think so I love this, by the way. Oh, oh my god! Thank Th you. This is like, oh my god! <laughs> oh, thank you, my god! Like, I feel like she's like gonna love it. And so I was like, it's oh, like the vibe. I'm like, ah. <laughs> okay, <period>. <laughs> <laughs> with that being said, like you know, I think with the Oscars, you know, you see a lot of like Oscar for best, you know, wardrobe, costume design, um, whatever. Is there one particular film that you either past or present that really stuck out to you that you just like, oh my God, that wardrobe was just. <laughs> that was Space Wars, Quest oh, by Deep Star. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because there were so many things, I, I call them gifts from the universe. Oh my God, <laughs> I can't even tell you. Oh, wow. That I had um, just grabbed, uh, you know, on, I was at Sabres. Yeah. Here in Vegas, which has amazing things. Uh, I, I don't know. Sometimes I, I go in there with this thought like, okay, I need this or this specific thing and I'll find it. I'm like, whoa, that's right. amazing. Right. Get from the universe, right? Right. So like Michael Pere, there was these uh, khaki pants and, and I, I didn't even see what size they were. I'm like, oh, okay. I just grabbed them and they fit in perfectly. That's Same thing with Sarah French, yeah. like these, these pants. <laughs> Okay, she wanted to wear this uh, black khaki, like black uh, pants with a white tank top. And I'm like, well, I have something a little more unique. So so her and Tyler met me at Garo Sassian's house. And I got all this stuff that, you know, in my wardrobe and stuff that I had bought. And these army green pants with, with uh, they had cutouts on the sides. They're really cool. And... and I don't know, it's just some uh, black, um, I don't know what you call them, like uh, tags or whatever they were hanging. And anything that has like movement with, with things okay. that are hanging, like yeah. a fringe or whatever, when you move, then they move. Right. Yeah. And I learned that in the uh, dance business. Mm -hmm. And they look really good on film. So she, she's, she was kind of fighting it. <laughs> and I'm like, well, just try them on for a lark, whatever, and, and just to see. And they fit her perfectly. Oh my God. It's like, gift in the universe. Yeah. And she looks in the mirror and she goes, oh, damn you. <laughs> yeah, see, it's all, you can have the eye. You sometimes have to trust the designer, you trust wardrobe because they see things that an actor or, or the person, or if they're styling, you know, um, can't. Cause like it's in, it's up here and it's kind of, it's kind of how I am with saying when people ask, I'm sure you know, when you chat by yourself, like, what do you look for? What would you wear with this? And you already know when you see an item, you're like, and you're going through a catalog. I'm sure yeah, you yeah. Oh my God. I call it the catalog, my brand. catalog. And you're like, yes, yes, yes. I could do this, 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 that one. Right. Yeah. And it happens like this. Mm. And oh, no one understands that. But, but I mean, wardrobe, I'm sure they go through. Yeah. That. And, and, the, uh, you know, I have a very visual mind. Mm -hmm. So, so a lot of times it's trying to get that vision from here to, to express, to, either the actor, director, whatever. Yeah. And because they're, they're like set on one thing and sometimes it takes, like, let me draw this for you, let me try to explain this or whatever. And they're just like, mm. and you're just like, please just trust me. Yeah. Like, why does the sleeve have to be that? Like, it has to be the puff. It can't be a butt. You know, like, <laughs> every little detail changes. Like, 
the first, for some reason, the movie that comes into mind was the one that just won the Academy Award. Poor things, right? And just, oh, like, my God, poor things! <laughs> the wardrobe. <laughs> you know, you see a lot about this film, and whatever, whatever, but it's to amazing. me, the oh wardrobe was amazing. Oh and it wasn't even just that, like, I would wear that, but, like, it also made so much sense to a movie that meant no sense at all, but made sense at the same time. Girl. But it was the same For you thing. to mention that particular yeah. film... <laughs> get from the universe. Yes, I was the whole time. I was like, I have to bring it up. Let's see if she brings it up. If I don't oh, think no, it's going to like but, <laughs> things for me, like yeah, Oscar, no Oscar to me for some like that movie alone. And and there people are like they're selling the cosplay versions of Emma Stone's character mm -hmm. Bella, mm -hmm. and she wears certain things. And I was just like, and it made so much sense. But it doesn't, you don't know how it makes sense. But you can, I can walk in and wear that, and no one would be like, "Oh, that's so cool." But in that movie, that made no sense. It made sense, but like, right? Like it just, you know. And that's the point, I think. It makes oh you think, God. and it just. So. Yeah. Our partner Chris Ross Leon. So so, him and Paul and I are forming our own production company, mm -hmm. and we're going to be creating our own. Epic shit. <laughs> See, this is what I'm saying. They're type, the type that's like, it seems so cool, so let's just like do it. <laughs> Not like anything ever seen yeah. before. So so we we are going to create even our own genre, you know. Yeah, you should. And, and that's the fun of it. <laughs> Maria's been audible this whole time. She's so into it. She's like, <gasps> like it's amazing. I'm, I'm so excited about yeah. this. I can't it's tell amazing. you. <laughs> Because I also saw, with doing my research uh, on you, like that you're also trying to produce and, and write, and I'm sure mm -hmm. in the brain, like, as a true artist, it's always going, right? Especially yeah. like, as a dancer, as a choreographer, I'm sure, you know, you're just creating things. And so I was going to lead to that question, and you answered it for me, <laughs> is that you're working on not only now starring and working on other people's films, but you are creating your own stuff. Yes. Right? Is yeah. that where you're headed? Is that what you mm -hmm. would like to do? Or oh, yes. Okay. Um Absolutely. Um, I was a dance director in the, in the dance business and choreographed um, and directed nine shows and, you know, traveled around. It, it, yeah. it was quite amazing. At, I taught at um, UNLV, the, the ballroom mm -hmm. dance program. I was a judge at the uh, Dance Sport Olympics. So that was really exciting. Um, so so directing, I, I'm always directing just just it's natural for me. Mm -hmm. So that's that's what I want to do. Okay. Yeah. So Paul and I started writing a couple of years ago, just some interesting, you know, short films and um, yeah, some feature, feature length. Mm -hmm. So that's exciting yeah. for us to create, again, create something out of nothing, right? Yeah. That's never been seen before. And, and with the wardrobe, oh my God, poor things. Uh, yeah, like I said, yeah. Chris Rothley on it. He said, you need to watch this. It's, yeah. And then we watched the background of it, and I related to her so much. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because, oh, my God, um, I felt like I was just born old. <laughs> and and when Emma Stone, when, when she portrayed that, you know, she was real. Mm -hmm. When she discovered herself, when, you know, just along the way, and then other people, like, Oh, you, you can't behave that way. Oh, you can't do that in society, whatever, you know. Right, oh, right. God, yeah. And she's like, why not? No, she <laughs> doesn't like, so outright. I'm like, like why not? And, and I relate to that so yeah. much because people try to keep you in a box. They try to keep you down. Oh, you can't wear that. You can't do this. I'm like, why not? <laughs> right, exactly. You, you remember Animal House? Yes. Right, John Belushi. Mm -hmm. Why not? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. And that, and that's the very thing. true. And yeah. she made it happen. And she ended up still being successful in the end. And she still, you know, came out victor oh. in my eyes. Yeah. I mean, there's so many interpretations you can take from the movie, right? And it's open to that. But I think in my eyes, I'm like, okay, yeah, and what? She did that and what? Right? And she still stayed true to herself. And I don't know why. That's it. That's stayed not, true yeah. to herself. And she herself. still came out victor. <laughs> and all those whatever, just, and she still sat there like, <laughs> Right? Like at the end, that was like the end scene. She's sitting there with all her... <laughs> Change that guy to a girl. All, like, exactly. <laughs> like, I mean, it's, it, it was absolutely, you know... It's like, but, oh, you're going to keep me down. I'm going to turn you into yeah, a and, and then there she was. She's still sitting there, like, pinky up with her tea in the garden. Hell her yeah. mansion, right? Oh, As it should God. be. That, yeah. Exactly. So, so the message is to stay true to yourself. Like, truly be who you are. No apologies. Don't let anyone... 
take it down or put you in a box. Fuck that shit. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. Because look what, in the movie, look what she did when she tried to go back to herself, that try to put herself in a box before she was reborn. She found out why. And she's like, <laughs> Uh, no. No, exactly. Um, so yeah. and now we know so you're going more towards the, the thing of directing what is success like for you where do you want to end up I'm sure with Paul and then mm -hmm. are you looking towards the stars mm -hmm. or are you looking towards mm -hmm. do you love indie life you know it's up to interpretation to you what do you truly where do you want to be yeah success is a journey an adventure Mm -hmm. That is success to me, to us. Um, it's all an adventure and it's, it's not a big house. It's not a car. It's not anything physical like that. It's creating, mm -hmm. constantly creating. Mm -hmm. And that is success and being true to yourself. Yeah. Um, because, oh my God. Um, I had a very abusive kept down childhood and I, I did not speak for a long time. I just walked around looking at my shoes, looking at my feet. When I started in ballet, when I was seven years old, I found my voice. I started to find my voice. Mm -hmm. The teacher said, hey, um, look at me, mm -hmm. put your head And I did, and I looked at her, and she was, don't ever put your head down ever again. Don't let anyone ever do it to you again. Mm -hmm. So I found, found my voice in that. And then, um, a couple of years ago, I, I ended up teaching ballet to young girls. And I said the same thing, like, mm -hmm. don't let anyone ever put you down like you matter you are important you're a girl and that's important mm -hmm. and i think what's beautiful about that is you continue to carry that narrative and you don't brush it off regardless of what comes your way and i think a lot of people need to hear things like this because so much right it brings us right back to what we we're talking about so much is trying to make you less than to push them up, right? Yeah. yeah. And do how do you go about making sure that you are going to be a change in that way? Just like that te ballet teacher was a change to you, I, in my mind, as she did, she made a huge change. Because if that didn't happen, maybe you would be here sitting here now, right? Yes, yes um, absolutely. How do you believe you can be that change within the industry with that toxicity and that drama? that we talk about, because I'm sure you don't want to keep that the same way, just as much as I, I don't. Um, what, what do you want to contribute to and how are you going to actively do that? Well, that's one thing um, Chris Ross Leon is encouraging me to, um, to write that story. He, he, he's like, um, oh my God, use that. Um, I was in a brutal car accident in the um, end of 2001. And 15 years of my life were stolen. I couldn't walk for three years. And to a dancer, that is like death. Mm -hmm. um, I, I got a part on Broadway before that happened, and the car accident wiped me out. And I, I did not want to live for a long time after that. But something in me mm -hmm. said, you know, hey, hang on. So I went through years of surgeries and everything, and um, going back to Bowie. <laughs> so in 2016, when, when he passed on to the next dimension, mm -hmm. he struck me with a bolt of lightning and said, hey, are you going to slowly die? Or, you know, are you going to go out the way you want to? And I said, and I got mad. I'm like, it's like hell no. I'm going to go out the way I want to, not slowly dying. That's bullshit. Mm -hmm. And... I got back into the business, and ever since then, I've been just like, you know, forward, onward, upward. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, the, he's been a big influence and, and continues to be a big influence in me. And for those who might be more on the introverted side that you might, where it's harder for them to express themselves, what can you say to them that can kind of, because as an artist, you can't, 
it sucks because you have to be an extra an introvert being an extrovert right and yeah, you find totally. a way to be present as an extrovert for a little bit and then go back so let's say someone can't and but you have how do you navigate bringing that part out of you even if it's just for that moment yeah right i i mean i am an introvert by nature and um yeah the dance business the, the film industry it it helped me break out of myself out of my head <laughs> and yeah what what i say to I, I mean really the top people like de niro they are introverts they're very shy yeah. Yeah. but but when they're on camera they like let it all out 100 percent it, as Carl Buto said, he, he, my coach years ago, he said, it's kind of like stripping your clothes off when you're on camera and being, being naked, right? And you let your true self out and be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And, and when, when they all cut, it's back to you, okay? I would be by myself. And, yeah. 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 So, so that's what I discovered about being an introvert in an extrovert industry. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it's okay too. Yeah, exactly. You know, you Absolutely. Don't have to be an extra to be an artist. Yeah. yeah, you know, and so and thank you for sharing. You know, a very vulnerable side of you. I always <laughs> want to thank you for that. I don't want you to feel embarrassed or anything. I'm glad. I want to get this out of people because I want people to see the true versions of yeah. the guests on this show. And so the final question that I ask all my guests, right, because um, that kind of sums up you as a person. Uh, in just maybe a sentence or even if it's word vomit if you don't know the answer because mm -hmm. I don't even know the answer sometimes to my own questions um, well, what is a philosophy that you live by? Hmm. It's a lot of Bowie's philosophy a thing that really stood out that, that he said was uh, for creatives anyone in the music, dance, film industry he goes if, if you feel comfortable and where you are it's like, that's death for an artist. He said, okay, so you're in the water, right? In the ocean. Your feet are touching the bottom. They're like, yeah, you're, you're comfortable. Why don't you step out a little bit, a little bit more until your feet don't touch the bottom? That's where you should be. That's my philosophy. You. You're always <laughs> testing new things. I know in your social media as well, every day is a new day. You're testing with new headshots, character shots, new makeup, um, you know, new outfits, a new character, and you're not afraid to just show those all on, on social media. Um, yeah, like I said, ugly me up. <laughs> I, I don't care. Like, like uh, yeah. I love playing different characters. Oh, oh, that's the other thing with uh, Lon Chaney was the man of a thousand faces. He was the original Phantom of the Opera, mm -hmm. which I think is still the best. Oh, it's one of the best. Oh my God, right? Yeah. Ramin uh, Caramel, I think, was my fa one of the, my favorite. Oh, we got to talk. We got to talk the like, same. <laughs> silent films, oh, right? No. Up until... Because... uh yeah, the musical theater. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> and our friend Chris understands that. He said, yeah, I, I've always said dancing is like a silent movie, right? Mm. And, and he said, film, like, the dialogue is the last thing. He said, it's like a silent movie. I'm like, yes, it that's it. So Lon Chaney being a man of a thousand faces, I said, well, I want to be a woman of a thousand and one faces. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See, Lon Chaney? And I believe, <laughs> I believe if anyone's going to do that, it's going to be her. Um, and, and I love that because I love how true you are and how unapologetic, I think that's a great word, um, <laughs> yeah. yourself that you are because it, it, it is what it is. You're not looking for validation. You no, to no. Do it I, you can I do it for myself. And, yeah. and, and really, like, when, when people compare whatever, you know, myself, I, I am my my competition, myself, mm -hmm. not anyone else. Right. Like, how can I be better each day? If I'm and, worried about the next person. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and, and that's true freedom, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, really, you don't care what other people think about you. You just do it because you love to do it, and you do it for yourself, and that's it. Mm -hmm. And don't let anyone take you down, especially women. Oh, my God, yeah. girls. Absolutely. Don't let anyone put you in a box, take you down. Just bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> Be yourself. Rise, rise to the top. I love that. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Please tell everyone where they can follow you and where they can see your upcoming works and, and et cetera, if they want to inquire about you being on their, <laughs> with their movie. Well, you're just going to have to have to research and find me. Oh, yeah. As you know, <laughs> I did it. You can do it. We all got internet these days. So. <laughs>
<laughs> so I'm just not telling. You just got the point. Yeah, I mean, it's not hard. If you want to, if, you if really not, it's to, cool too. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> amazing. Well, thank you so much for being here and being so open and vulnerable with us and oh telling God, your story. You are so lovely, oh. and you are definitely. A, an amazing person. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I much about you too. I was so glad you finally were able to come on the show. I know it's been multiple times I've been trying to get you. <laughs> and now we're here and we get you and Paul and then the whole energy of the room did a 180. <laughs> I swapped in. So thank you uh, so much. And that is Joanna Heckman, every woman around of applause. So please, please support her and just look out for her and just, you know, just watch and wait and see is, you know yeah. or not it's cool not. <laughs> but it should probably just be popping up you know which i love but when we come back we'll have our closing monologue and, and then that'll be it for this fabulous wednesday so see you after this break now on digital and dvd Hit it. space wars quest for the deep star is an epic sci-fi adventure do what needs to be done an edge of your seat wild ride we have company Tons of popcorn munching fun. Five stars. A love letter to the sci fi films of the 70s and 80s. With plenty of action and fun for all. You need to see it. You really do. The captain just decided it's time to go. I am ready for a sequel. Experience a bold new adventure. Space Wars Quest for the Deep Star. A good old fashioned adventure. <laughs> now on digital and DVD. Hi, I'm Deacon T with Modern Word Ministries. It's great to be with you today. Just a short little promo for our show. Every Sunday morning we have service, and you can follow us at 10 a.m. Pacific Time on modernwordministries.org. And if you missed us or you want to see some of our older messages, go ahead and check us out on socialmediashows.com every single morning at 9 a.m. It's a great way to kick off your day, get a little bit of the word in you, get something uplifting, get you started off on your way. You know, if you're looking for prayer or you need some help, reach out to us. If you go to our website, again, that's modernwordministries.org, you can interact with me via telephone, via DM, text message, whatever you want. I'll get right back to you. So if you need prayer, you need help, you just need somebody to talk to. Modern Word Ministries is here for you. We are your church in the community. So until you see you next time, be blessed, everybody. Bye-bye. Hi guys and welcome back to The Hot Seat. I'm your host Priscilla Moy. I hope you enjoyed this amazing, amazing, amazing show. It definitely was a little unexpected and brought so many different energies than we've seen in other shows prior. But I hope as always you can take everything that you watch here and meet these different people and it inspires you at home, whether it is whatever you want to do, whether it's business, whether it's in the arts, whether it's backstage, whether it's entrepreneurship um, or producing or hosting, whatever it is, I hope that the people here and their stories really hit you right at home. So a few announcements, like we've been talking about, as always, we do, do, do have castings for the hot seat. I know a lot of people are always asking, how can I get on the show? How can I get on the show? We have mo many shows in this network, and not just mine, but if you are inquiring about a certain show, please email your bio and your headshot and please specify which show you want to be on do all of that to this email address admin at socialmediashows.com and that will be submitted to production and then they will go through a casting process please be patient with that as there's many emails that come through every second of every hour and if you don't hear back please give us a little more time but please know that this is a casting and this is not a guaranteed spot this is not a promised spot this is not anything and so please 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 understand that and to know that there are certain standards that we do hold for you to sit on the hot seat and then also we do do red carpets whether that's for film festivals movie premieres even grand openings of places if you want that live footage and a host on site to interview whoever it is um there whether it's cast members whether it's the director where it's writer where it's people coming from out of state whether it's whatever you know, politicians, any type of event in town, you can hire us, you can hire the team here at Social Media Shows and then 
we will come out there with all of our equipment and a red carpet and it will stream live in real time. You don't necessarily have to have me as your host, even though I would hope that you would choose me, but there are many hosts that would be up for the job um, that would be able to go out and make that experience something worthwhile. You'd be able to air it all over the world and all the people that know of social media shows and you can highlight what's going on live in real time. You do not have to wait for the file in an edited copy of the red carpet to be handed to you for you to post that on your social media. So everyone can watch it, they can see what's happening, they can, you know, be in the know and kind of help promote you as well. So with that being said, that email is also going to be admin at socialmediashows.com. You can inquire about prices, rates, you know, whether or not we can go out of state, whether it's in state, just all that information. If you want to know that you can hit up production and then we can discuss those details with you. We are already booked for many, so please keep on the lookout if you want to see what that might be like. We do have other red carpets that we have done that you can go back on the website or on our Facebook, our YouTube, socialmediashows.com is the website that you can go back and look at previous red carpet events and film festivals to see the format of those. So if just take a little gander and then give us a little call and then we can be right there highlighting your event. So that is all I have for you today this Wednesday. It's been a little long, but I hope you guys had fun. We all had fun here in the studio. So I know that you guys are sitting there at home having fun by yourselves and laughing along right there with us. We do appreciate your likes, your comments, your support, your shares. Please continue to support us here at Social Media Shows here in Las Vegas. And I will see you next Wednesday at 3 p.m.